Okay, hi everyone. Um, we are starting chapter two. This chapter is going to be all about exponents, and we're going to use those exponents when we learn about scientific notation in particular. So we're going to extend on what you already know about exponents, but first I wanted to review just a little bit of vocabulary. All right, so when we have an exponent, we have something that looks like this. We have here two to the third power, and so in your reading startup, you should have seen that 2 is the base, 3 is the exponent. So the base is the number or expression that we will use as a factor in, in this expression. So in this case, we're going to use 2 as a factor three times, the number of the exponent. And we refer to the entire expression, 2 to the third power, as a power. So this is an uh, an exponential expression, and we will call it a power, and so you'll see that word used a lot. Okay, so that's the vocabulary that we're going to use. So what I want to do in this video is just walk you through the explore activity. So you should have your book open to explore activity one, and we're just gonna we're gonna go through it together, and you're gonna pause this video so that you can fill it in as you go. And if you prefer to do this with your parent, that's fine as well. I just wanted to offer this as an option. So, okay, so let's look at Explore Activity 1. So we've got this table here, and it's got lots of exponential expressions um, or powers. So we can see 5 to the 4th, um, 5 to the 3rd, and this table goes across rows like this. So here, using 5 as the base, using 4, and using 3 as the base. So before we fill this in, because you are familiar with whole number powers, so these should be familiar to you. 5 squared is 5 times 5, 4 to the third is 4 times 4 times 4. So these are familiar to you. Using 0 and negative numbers as exponents is probably unfamiliar to you. So that's what we're going to look at right now. So before we fill in these boxes, what we first want to do is to look at what patterns do we see in the powers of 5, the powers of 4, and the powers of 3. So what kinds of patterns are you seeing? Okay, so I want to alert you to a couple things that you're going to look for. You're going to look for um, these are equations in each of these boxes, all right? So there's a left side and a right side. Um, so we want to look at what's happening to the left side as we go across, what's happening to the right side as we go across. Okay, so pause the video, think about that for a few minutes, and see if you can um, notice the patterns that are happening. Okay, so hopefully you have noticed that as we move from left to right across this table, the exponent is decreasing by one each time. Five, four to three to two to one, and then down to zero, and it continues to decrease by one as we go negative, all right? Um, and as we look at the right side of these equations, 625 to 125 to 25 to five, you might notice that um, as we, as the exponent decreases by one, the power is divided by five, okay? So 625 divided by five is 125. Another way to divide by five is to multiply by one-fifth. You could think of it that way. But really we're dividing by five, 25 divided by five is five. We divide by five as we go across. So you should see a similar pattern for four. Um, 64 divided by 4 is 16, 16 divided by 4 is 4, and again these exponents are decreasing. So those are the types of patterns that we're seeing as we go through. Um, so you should go ahead and, and fill in your explore activity as we go along here. All right, so now that you've finished that and you're going to fill, you've hopefully filled in part B and C as well. Um, we are going to try to fill in um, parts D, E, and F tell us to complete the values um, that are left out of our table. And so what we want to do is use our pattern to do that. So um, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and see what you can come up with, see what you can fill in on those values and maybe you already have. So if you haven't, pause the video and do that now. 
All right, so let's, let's think about this. So if we're dividing by five as we go across the table, um, then we would want to take five right here. Um, we're going to take this value, divide it by five, and that would be what would go into the next um, place on the table. So five divided by five or times one-fifth would be just one. Okay, and then as we continue to divide by 5, as we go to the negative exponent, negative 1, so 5 to the negative 1 would be 1 divided by 5, or 1 times 1 fifth, which would be 1 fifth. All right, so when we're in this, um, in this lesson, we want to use fraction notation. Don't start doing decimals. And I encourage you not to use your calculator for a while on these. Um, we really want to understand what these negative exponents are. So again, we want to take one-fifth and divide it by five. So one-fifth divided by five, which is the same as one-fifth times one-fifth, would be one-twenty-fifth. So that's what would go into this last cell right here. Um, so we could do the same thing for using four as a base and for using three as a base. So the, the powers of four and the powers of three. So let's look at what would that look like. So we'd have one, again, taking four and dividing by four, or multiplying by one fourth would give us one. One divided by four is one fourth, and one fourth divided by four is one sixteenth. And we could do the same thing for the powers of three. Okay, now that you have your table filled in, we're going to move down to the reflect uh, portion of this activity. And so we want to make a conjecture, another way, in other words, a kind of an educated guess um, for what does it mean to say a to the zero or a to the negative n? In other words, some sort of base raised to the zero power. Um, when this was a whole number, like one, two, three, or four, we know that that, that means from our, from our definition earlier, a to the second power, for instance, means use a as a factor two times. Well, what does it mean to use a as a factor zero times or to use a as a factor negative three times or something like that? So we need a rule or a definition for these two cases, all right? So, but from our table, can you write a rule for what should a to the zero be? And what should a to the negative n look like? So pause the video and think about that for a minute. And then um, we'll kind of check our ideas together. So go ahead and do that now. OK, so let's think about this. If you look at your table, um, 5 to the 0 was 1, 4 to the 0 was 1, and 3 to the 0 is 1. So I think we could write a general rule and say that any base, give it the, the number a, raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. Okay, the only number we're going to exclude from that would be when a is equal to 0. The reason for that is we can't divide by 0. Anything divided by 0 is undefined. So in order to get to this 1, Remember, we were dividing by the base, okay? So if the base is zero, that's not going to be um, well-defined. So that would be excluded. Um, okay, so what about a to the negative n? Okay, so a to the negative n, we often want to change in, in algebra, we want to change negative exponents to positive exponents so that we can work with them more easily. So that's why we want to have a rule for this. And so you can see from the table that 3 to the negative 2, for instance, is 1 ninth, all right? 4 to the negative 2 is 1 sixteenth. So what's the, you know, what's kind of the pattern we're seeing there? Well, 1 ninth can be thought of as 1 over 3 squared, and 1 sixteenth is 1 over 4 squared. And you'll see that pattern throughout the table. And so a way to write this general rule would be to say that a to the negative n if I want to rewrite it with a positive um, exponent, and sometimes I might want to go both ways with this, but a to the negative n is the same thing as saying 1 over a to the n. So that's going to be our definition for the negative exponent. 
And I'm going to insert a, a nice Khan Academy video that does a good job of explaining over again why this definition makes sense. But that's what we want to write here. We want to say a to the negative n is the same thing or is equal to 1 over a to the positive n. So we could use this both ways. We might have a fraction, 1 over a to the n. We want to rewrite it. We could write it as a to the negative n or vice versa. So these are equivalent expressions. OK, that's explore activity 1. And um, we will do explore activity 2 in just a minute.